last two visits, we talked about adventurers. Ernest Shackleton, who explored Antarctica, and the men who rode the rails during the Great Depression. Today, I want to introduce you to a man whose adventure took 14 years to complete. He wouldn't have wanted us to call him an adventurer, even though he spent years climbing up and down and over a 500-foot mountain every day, even after he was 70 years old. He would have wanted us to call him an artist a sculptor. A sculptor is a person who carves statues, sometimes from clay, sometimes from metal, and sometimes, like the man we're going to talk about today, from stone. His name is Gutson Borglum. He's the man responsible for carving the four presidents' faces, Washington, Jefferson, Teddy Roosevelt, and Lincoln, on the great American monument, Mount Rushmore, in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Gutsum Borglum's parents came to America from Denmark. He was born in 1867 in Idaho and later moved to Nebraska. Even when he was young, he knew he wanted to be an artist. He studied art first in San Francisco and later in London and Paris. He moved to New York in 1901 and began to receive attention for his sculptures. He sculpted statues of American leaders and the Twelve Apostles. But he soon became more interested in creating gigantic sculptures like the ancient Egyptians did, carving statues from rock. He sculpted the head of Abraham Lincoln from a six-ton block of marble. In 1915, some Southern women saw this work and asked Borglum to sculpt the head of the Confederate General Robert E. Lee to put on top of Stone Mountain in Georgia. When Borglum first saw Stone Mountain, he said, I saw the thing I had been dreaming of my whole life. But he said a statue the size the women wanted was too small a project. He told them, it would be like putting a postage stamp on a barn door. Instead, he sketched the design of a gigantic sculpture of Lee and his soldiers marching across the face of Stone Mountain and was hired to do the work. He began cutting away rock in 1916 and was able to unveil the head of Lee in 1924. But after 10 years of planning and work, Borglum had finished less than one-tenth of the project. He was fired. Someone else was hired to finish the work. A man named Doan Robinson, who was the state historian for South Dakota, had seen newspaper accounts of people driving for miles just to see Borglum at work on Stone Mountain. Mr. Robinson wanted attention like that for South Dakota something that would draw tourists to travel to his state. Robinson wrote Borglum and invited him to visit. He told Borglum his idea. Gutson Borglum took the job and chose Mount Rushmore for the location of the monument. But he needed money to get started. The man who helped him was South Dakota Senator Peter Norbeck. Through all the years Borglum worked on Mount Rushmore, Senator Norbeck supported him in all he needed. Norbeck convinced President Calvin Coolidge to come to South Dakota to see what Borglum was doing. When President Coolidge visited for the official dedication, he said the government ought to help Borglum get the project completed. Borglum started hiring men to do the work of using dynamite and jackhammers to carve the faces on the mountain. There weren't many jobs available, and the men were glad of the work. But when Borglum began training them, some people would work only one day and quit. They couldn't stand being up so high or all the dust that came from using the jackhammers, which weighed 40 or 50 pounds. July 4, 1930, a year after the work began, Washington's face was finished. However, Borglum had spent so much money on the ceremony to unveil the first carving, money ran out. And then his friend Senator Norbeck was diagnosed with cancer. 
The next year, things got worse when the men began carving Jefferson's face. Originally, Jefferson was supposed to be on Washington's right. They labored on the face for 18 months before they admitted the rock there would not work. They had to start all over on Washington's left. By then, the Depression had begun. People were leaving the state. In 1932, the work stopped completely. Once again, Senator Norbeck saved Mount Rushmore. At the end of 1932, President Hoover started passing out relief money. Norbeck got $100,000 for workers on Mount Rushmore, and he convinced the National Park Service to take over the project, which would also guarantee money. In 1933, after a year and a half of no work on the mountain, work began again. The central crew came back and went to work on the new Jefferson Head. Lincoln Borglum, Gutson's 21-year-old son, was in charge when his father would be away in Washington working to raise more money. Lincoln was as eager to finish the work as his father was. He was a good boss and was always busy at work with the other men. Senator Norbeck continued to work behind the scenes, trying to support Borglum until he was finished. But by the end of 1934, Norbeck could work no longer. His four-year battle with cancer had worn him down. In 1935, he went to the Senate again and got $200,000 for the project. He knew it would be his last big fight. He had worked many years to make sure Mount Rushmore was completed, but he believed all the credit would go to Borglum. He told a friend, a week after I'm gone, they will start to forget me. A decade will go by, and most people of South Dakota will be unable even to recall my name. But in 1936, Norbeck was on hand when President Roosevelt came to Mount Rushmore to dedicate the new Jefferson sculpture. FDR said on that day, there are two people who told me about this in the early days. One was Mr. Borglum and the other, Senator Norbeck. That day was one of the crowning moments of Norbeck's life. He said, Mount Rushmore is no longer a dream, it's real. Borglum kept working. Even after he was 70 years old, he wanted to make his sculpture better. In 1937 to 39, Lincoln and Roosevelt were appearing. Borglum said, I should be tired of it, but I'm not. By 1940, Borglum was famous, known as the man who carved mountains. But there was still much to be done. He wanted to extend the sculptures down to the waist. He wanted to create a hall of records, which would be a time capsule for storing historic documents. In 1941, the coming of World War II overwhelmed Mount Rushmore. Money was needed for the war effort. After 12 years, Congress cut off funding for good. A week later, Gutson Borglum died unexpectedly after he had surgery. His son Lincoln took over and completed the last details. The work gradually stopped. The last member of the crew who worked on Mount Rushmore, Nick Clifford, died in November 2019. Did you learn a new word today? What is a sculptor? Remember an important date? When did work on Mount Rushmore end? The crew who worked on Mount Rushmore played on a company baseball team against company teams from other towns. One year, the Rushmore team represented the Black Hills in the state championships and made it to the semifinals. Visitors to Mount Rushmore have observed how real the eyes of the presidents look. This is because the eye of each sculpture has a 20-inch shaft of granite. This makes the eye seem as if it is twinkling 
when the sun hits the shaft. Thank you for visiting with me today. See you next time.